So with this one, we're going to look at the um, reshape. And I'm going to show you some techniques with reshape, cut, using the lock function and using the hide function. So let's kind of break down kind of what they are. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go over top of the sketch that I did of this little robot. And we're just going to kind of focus on the head just to show you really have all the tools to make, make this thing. Um, you don't think you do, but you do. Um, especially after some of the, the, the quick techniques I'm going to show you uh, right now. So that being said, let's take a look at what lock does. So I can create the square, right? So if I had two squares over top of each other and I kept trying to select, do a little paint mark here. Um, I kept trying to select this inner square, but let's say I just, I, I couldn't do it. Well, I can select on that and do either I can go up to object lock selection or I could do command two. And what that allows me to do is really kind of just grab this piece. You can see that I can kind of click or, and drag and it doesn't select that. <laughs> to release it, you can go back up there or you can do command option two and releases, unlocks everything. Now let's say you're working with something and this shape is just not gonna move. It's just gonna be in that place and you just don't need to see it. You could do command three um, or object hide selection. What this allows you to do is actually hide that selection, move this around without having the potential of selecting it. Um, command option three brings it back. Okay, really super cool. Something else that I use a lot of, uh, I, I use it especially with circles or any sort of ellipse or rounded shape. Um, so let's take this and I'm actually gonna take it off of uh, the fill just to show you. So something we haven't gone over yet are the scissors tools, right? This allows me to cut anything at any point at any time. So I can click here and click here and I've essentially sliced this object into. Now, what I like about this is I could put these kind of points anywhere and it could cut it. I could go along here, use that cut tool. Um, there we go. I've, I've made a cut right there. Um, so we're going to use that technique with, with some of the stuff here, hide and show, um, as well as the, the reshape tool. All right. So with the reshape tool, what's really nice about that is you can take kind of straight objects and bend them, right? Which is, which is really nice. So to create a curved head like this, it would be kind of a pain to do. So I'm going to draw a box. Um, you get it kind of close to where you want. Um, it's not going to be perfect for my sketch really isn't all that perfect. And I'm going to have to pull up two tool, two, whoa, two tools for you. One is the reshape, right? So we're going to tear this off. And the other one we haven't worked too much with as of yet is the direct select, right? So these are the two tools that I need to use. So in order to make this happen, let me just show you kind of out here just with a line. Um, so we're going to use the line tool, which is here, right? So the line tool, it does, it's a really easy tool. I waited to this point because it's really not all that difficult. It draws a line. Hold the shift down, draws a straight line. So I'm going to deselect that and grab the, the white arrow tool and select it. And then I'm going to grab the reshape tool and just go anywhere on this path. And you can see I can make it into a curve. Now these are called handlebars. And we'll get, so if I use the white arrow tool here, as I move the handlebar, you can see shapes move. Now I, we're not going to get too much into that because um, the next week we are going to cover the pen tool, which covers more of the handlebars. Just know that that's what's used to reshape um, your line. I'm going to deselect this. This is very important. It doesn't work if you don't do that. Deselect it. Select back on the line. Select back on the reshape tool. And you can see the other line that I already had does not move. So now I can create a curved line like that. Right? And it kind of has a bad point there. It's where I pulled it from. So we are going to use that. And we're going to use that here. So I'm going to write, I just have this box. And we're going to create curved elements from this box. I'm going to use the direct selection, click on it, click on my reshape, drag that up to where I want it, select off, select back on, go back to the reshape tool, right? We're going to move this out like so, uh, click off of it. Um, and incidentally, a shortcut you can do if you don't want to constantly keep going back is while I'm in the reshape tool, if I hold the command key down, you can see I get the white arrow tool. So that's what I'm going to use from now on. 
click on that, reshape, command, click off, click on, reshape into that. Right, so now I have this kind of roundedness, but what I don't like are these kind of corners that are here. So here's what you do. I'm gonna again use my direct selection here. Select on it, I'm gonna use the handy feature of the rounded corners inside of Illustrator and just round those edges just, you know, just ever so slightly. There we go, now I have my rounded head shape. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw this little, um, you know, side bolt or whatever this is. So I'm going to, again, make another rectangle. I'm gonna go grab my direct select, click on it, uh, grab my reshape, and kind of pull that out like so, right? So I don't need to make the other one because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my option and shift and drag it over. And all I'm gonna do is then rotate this around and kind of line it up somewhat like uh, my previous one. So now we have the head, we have the outer, uh, outer bolts. Uh, now we're gonna work on the eyes. So we're gonna grab the ellipse tool and I'm just going to draw my ellipse inside of here. I'm gonna duplicate this out and then make it smaller. But I want you to notice something as I made this smaller, right? You may be saying, well, that's the stroke weight looks different. It does. Now, in case you don't know what the stroke weight is, we haven't gone over it too much because we really haven't been dealing with it. The stroke weight is here, right? And so you can make that larger or smaller, right? Just by clicking up and down. Oh, two points. So what has happened is as I'm as I had scaled this, the stroke scaled down with it, but that's not what I want because I want everything to be a uniform width. So that's really a preference situation. So you go to preference general and you want to uncheck scale stroke and effects. You just don't want it to, to scale it. So let's erase this here. Let's see if this works. So now as I duplicate this over and shrink it, you can see it retained the same um, stroke weight. We are gonna take a line. I'm gonna zoom in so I make sure I can get this right. Create a line, go all the way across. Create another line, go all the way across. Now we're gonna do the eyes. Um, the eyes are just are, are simple. Um, it's going to be, um, we're just gonna do a shape here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna fill this completely, right? You can do Shift X, we'll take it from a stroke to a fill. And I'm actually gonna duplicate that out make this a little bit smaller, and we're gonna do some reflections, which are just basically just white. All right, there we go. Now I am gonna do a different eye over here, but I'm gonna duplicate the elements, just so that I have them, so I don't have to repeat this process. All right, and we're just gonna shift where those reflections are, just to show you that you can. And let's do the mouth while we're here. And this is what's great. I'm actually going to do this as a straight line. And we're gonna use this trick that we just learned and reshape. And there we go. And I am then going to grab this as a straight line. And the same thing, we're gonna use reshape and I'm just gonna reshape that into a little curve. So there we have our head. Um, I, let's, let's go ahead and do this top here. This top one is easy, right? So there we go. Um, I think it was all two as the weight. And then we are going to draw then a rectangle here. Now you look at that and you go, well, okay, well all the shapes are overlapping and this and that, and, and yes, they are. So uh, I know I'm gonna color this, so I know there's a couple things I can do with coloring um, that that I'm really can I can set things behind other things, and I don't really have to worry too much about the coloring. So, for example, we're going to take this and we're going to make this a gray, and we're going to set it behind everything else, and we're going to take these two bolts, boom, boom, and we are going to make them red, and we're going to set them behind everything else again. So now what we have is we have 
this. So it looks like, so the shapes are actually not um, cut at all, but they're, they're there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this and this, and I'm going to lock it. So Command-2. Um, once you have that locked, you can then go on to other things. You can go on to coloring this. So for example, I want to color this. Um, let's color that red. Let's also color this middle one gray. And we're going to set that to the back. Right, so it's in the back, and then this is sitting forward. So again, you can have that kind of uh, play um, with that. Now, this um, video has gone a little bit longer than any of the other ones, right? But this is kind of showing you how I would approach something else. Um, I do have another technique that I want to show you, but I'm going to end this part, and we're going to continue it on in a second part.